بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى we want to speak about today a very important topic which had يعني big ramifications upon the Muslim Ummah which had big ramifications upon the Muslim Ummah and it's the topic of maqtal uh, Ali, the death of Ali radiallahu anhu and as we all know uh, Ali radiallahu anhu was a great Sahabi and is the fourth of the Khulafa al Rashidu, the fourth of the rightly guided Khalifas. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Akbar ummati Ali. The person with the most uh, judicial strength, the most wisest person with regards to being a judge, is Ali. And that's because a judge not only needs to have ma'rifah, uh, understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. But a judge also needs to have farasa. He also needs to have farasa, insight, vision, uh, with regards to the ahkam and with regards to seeing who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth, and to uh, deal with the people with justice. Which is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Aqba ummati Ali." The most wisest in terms of being a judge in my ummah is Ali, radhiyallahu anhu. So. With regards to the death of Ali radiallahu anhu, before we even get into this, um, this is not for the sake of qisas and just telling qisas. First, you just tell stories. And it's a story, we just come here and we listen to a story. This is, not, this is not the reason why. There has to be a hikmah behind listening to something. It's not just now we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about Ali radiallahu anhu who was just killed and khalas. This is not why we. We we and we listen because of the consequences, the ramifications of these particular things of what happened. The ramifications of what happened after the death of Ali radiallahu anhu is significant. We're not just here just to talk. Islam is not a, a religion where we just speak about kisas and stories and there's no benefit. At the end of this, there should be some benefit, inshaAllah ta'ala. So in the year, يعني, as we know, the Hijri date, the Hijri calendar starts, what? It begins with the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Mecca to Al-Medina where the companions sat down and, and uh, uh, يعني, uh, did mushawarah, they discussed amongst themselves when should they make the date, what, what should be the start of the Islamic calendar and they said that it should be the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So after the Hijrah, يعني في سنة الثمان وثلاثين the year thirty eight بدأ ظهور الخوارج that this fitna of the خوارج started to appear now يعني before we even get into the fitna of the خوارج in the time of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه there was not a lot of fitna internally in terms of yes he had the issue of the مرتدين but relatively it was not a huge issue whereby the خليفة himself was going to be killed. The Khilafah of Abu Bakr was two years and a few months. The Khilafah of Umar radiallahu anhu is ten years. The Khilafah of Uthman is twelve years. And the Khilafah of Ali radiallahu anhu was four years and a few months. So Uthman radiallahu anhu was killed. Uthman radiallahu anhu was killed. Uh, people did muhasarah of his, of his house where he lived. And he was brutally murdered while he was reading the Quran. So Uthman was killed. So after the death of Uthman, there was a lot of يعني, uh, siraat. There was a lot of يعني, uh, upheaval in Al Medina and in the Muslims in general. Because how could the Khalifa he himself, who is a who is a rightly guided Khalifa, the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Bashar bin Jannah, Prophet said Uthman's in Jannah and he got killed. How can this happen in his own house? So there was a lot of fitna. Whereas when 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 uh, when when Umar died, it was different circumstances. His, his, his house was not raided. So there's a lot of يعني, anger and unrest when uh, when this has happened. And some of the Sahabas they wanted the first thing that Ali 
radiallahu anhu, the first thing that they wanted him to do was to get revenge for those people who killed Uthman. That was the first thing. And Ali, from his hikmah, from his wisdom, from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had gifted him, did not want to do that straight away. Yani because of his hikmah, um, and he believed that the hal, it should not be done like this. Yes, we should, yani, there should be some uh, things that take place in terms of bringing justice to the people who killed Uthman. But Mubasharat and straight away, yani, this was not what he wanted to do. Anyway, this happens, yani, uh, some ghazawat happen, some yani, uh, ghazwat al safin uh, uh, the ghazwa, the, the war of Safin, the war of the Jamal happens, and yani, companions are killed, and we don't want to get into that. Ala kulli hal, the khilafah splits into two. The khilafah splits into two. So before the khilafah used to be under Ali, and then after that, the khilafah breaks into two. So you have Ali and you have Muawiyah. Ali in Iraq and Muawiyah in Asha. Muawiyah, radiallahu anhu, who was a Sahabi who used to write down the Quran, because of some politics that, that took place, Muawiyah refused to give bay'ah to Ali. He refused to give bay'ah to Ali, and to give allegiance. Meaning that he is a he has his own uh, uh, khilafah, he has his own mulk, he has his own kingdom, and Ali has his own kingdom. So now, yani, there's two different kingdoms, and in the khilafah of Ali, there is a group of people in the masajid that they're making a lot of noise. 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 And يعني, the noise that they're making is they keep on saying يعني, إن الحكم إلا لله, that the rule is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they just kept on saying other things, the same ibarah, لا حكم إلا لله, that there is no hukum except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And they also kept on saying that I or man lam yahkum bima anzal Allah fa ulaika humul kafirun. Whoever does not rule by that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, fa ulaika humul kafirun, then they are the kafirun. They kept on saying this with loud voices in the masjid. So Ali radiallahu anhum went up to them and he said to them, yani an ibarah. And this ibara became a method in Arabic. It became a, a, a saying that everybody says. And he said to them, Ali radiallahu anhu said to them, Kalimatul haqq urida biha al-baatil. Kalimatul haqq urida biha al-baatil. A truthful statement you are saying, but behind what you are saying is falsehood. So you are using a true statement to spread your falsehood. Kalimatul haqq urida biha al-baatil. Fajam'ahum. Ali, uh, Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali, from his adal, he did jam of them. He didn't just straight away punish them. Jam'ahum. He gathered them and he said, Mada turidun? What do you want? Qalu al hukum bi kitab illahi tabarak wa ta'ala. They said, We want the hukum, we want the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said that you are ruling, you're a man. We want the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important because. This is going to come back for what's happening today in the Muslim Ummah uh, with the Sira'at al that we have today. So, Fa'ata Ali radiallahu anhu bi kitab. In the masjid, Ali radiallahu anhu, he brought the Mus'haf, he brought the Quran. Fawada'ahu amamahum, he brought the Mus'haf and he brought it upon them. Thumma wada'a yadahu ala kitab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He brought the Mus'haf and he put his hand atop the Mus'haf. And he said, Takallam ya kitab Allah, speak. Oh, Book of Allah, speak. <coughs> speak. Yeah, you're saying that you don't want us to rule, you want the Book of Allah. He brought the Kitab and he said, Speak. Qalu al Kitab la yitakallam. The Khawarij said to him, Al Kitab la yitakallam. The, the book does not speak. The book does not speak. And then Ali radiallahu anhum said, said yani, a kalima statement with wisdom. Qalu nahnu natakallam bi Kitab Allah. Wa bima utina min al ilm. That we speak. From that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. And we judge and we do our actions based on the knowledge that we have gained from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani you keep on saying, in al hukmu illa lillah, that the hukm is only for Allah. The book itself is not going to, yani pray. The book itself is not going to talk. 
You have to implement that which is in the Quran. Okay? So, Tarkahum, he left them. Ali radiallahu anhu left the Khawarij. Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu left the Khawarij. So they started to, يعني, the Khawarij, they went to a place known as Harura. They went to an area where they secluded themselves. And this is what the Khawarij do. The Khawarij, when they gather together, they go to the mountains. They go to the mountains, which is why even in um, some countries where the Khawarij spread, al ibadiyya they went to Jazair. They went to the mountains of Jazair, Algeria. They live in the mountains of Al Jazair, for example. And there was a jama'ah of Muslims known as Al Murabitun, the Murabitun. And they, if it wasn't for the Murabitun, then North Africa would have been uh, Khawarij. They were known as Al Murabitun. Al Murabitun are the, they were not an Arab tribe, they were a Berber tribe. They were a Berber tribe, they became Muslim and they spread Islam to Mauritania, they spread Islam to Senegal, not Senegal, to Mali. Mali and those parts of North and West Africa, Al Murabitun, this is the ma'na. And the Murabitun, this was in the time when Muslim Spain was under Muslim control. And when the Christians of Spain tried to take back Spain, Al Murabitun, if it wasn't for the Murabitun, they would have stopped. Uh, they, would, they stopped the Spanish from taking over Spain. And their sheikh is known as Az-Zajjaj. Az-Zajjaj ibn, I forgot his name. His student was another student. And his sheikh is Ibn Abd al-Bar. And whoever is not Ibn Abd al-Bar, who was a big imam, from, who was a Maliki imam from Spain, and he wrote the Shar al muwatta the Shar al muwatta al muwatta yani Imam Malik. The Shar al muwatta Imam Malik was written by Ibn Abd al-Bar. Ibn Abd al-Bar had tulab, had students, and his students, students taught the Murabitun and Islam, and the Murabitun, they stopped al ibadiyya And even in Oman now, they are the descendants of the Khawarij. Anyway, we'll get back to that, inshaAllah ta'ala. So now these people, uh, what I was trying to say, the shahid from the Kalam, what I was trying to say is that the Khawarij, لما يجتمعون يمشون إلى البر أو يمشون إلى القرى When they gather together, they leave, they go to, they, they go to villages and they stay like that. So for example, Al-Shabaab or Al-Boko Haram, you never see them in the city. You see them in the mountains, they only live with one another because they believe everybody is Kuffar. So, this is what they did. They went to the mountains because they believe everybody is Kuffar. فَبَعْثَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ عَبَّاسِ يعني أو بُعْثَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ عَبَّاسِ بَعْلَ عَلِي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ عَبَّاسِ Ali رضي الله عنه, he sent Abdullah ibn Abbas to go and debate with these people, these uh, Khawarij. Go and debate them. And some narrations say, do not debate them with the Book of Allah, debate them with the Sunnah. Because the people, anyone can take the Book of Allah and can say whatever they want with it. The way in which you defeat Ahlul Bid'ah is with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Ba'atha, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ba'atha Abdullah ibn Abbas liyunadhiruhum. To debate them. وَقَالُوا لَهُ And they said to him, إِنَّ عَلِيًّا قَدْ كَفَرُ That Ali رضي الله عنه has become a kafir. Ali رضي الله عنه has become a kafir. Now this مسألة, we're going to have to come back to this مسألة because some ulama, there's اختلاف with the ulama, عقيدة. هل الخوارج كفار أو المسلمون؟ Are the kufar, are the khawarij kufar or muslimun? This مسألة, of the fact that they did takfir on Ali is going to come back to us because some ulama say they are kuffar because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam bashar Ali bi anhu min al-jannah he said that Ali is from jannah so for you to say that Ahl al-jannah is a kafir if you are a kafir because you're doing takdeeb you're denying what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said and we'll get back to that mas'al so he, they said inna Ali yan qad kafar that Ali has what? has uh, yani has disbelieved and they brought some shubuhat three main shubuhat but i'm just going to bring two of them for the sake of the lecture yani, to make it easy so the first thing or one of the things yani, the second point that ibn abbas عنه, when he uh, debated them he asked them Qala inna they said that ali when he did sulh with muawiyah when he made a treaty a pact with muawiyah 
Ibn Abi Sufyan, when Ali made a pact with Muawiyah, he said that هذا ما صالحنا أو هذا ما صالح أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب. He said that this pact, this contract that I write with you, Muawiyah, is what Ali or, or Amir al-Mu'minin Ali has written. He's put the word Amir al-Mu'minin. He prefaced what he said with Amir al-Mu'minin. This is what Amir al-Mu'minin Ali is saying. So Muawiyah radiallahu anhu said, "Ma ba yatuk? I didn't give you bay'ah. So take away Amir al-Mu'minin. You're not Amir al-Mu'minin with me. Take it off." So Ali he took it off and said. He said, يعني أذكر اسمك واسم أبيك. Say your name and the name of your father, Ali bin Abi Talib. So they said that if he is not Amir al-Mu'minin, فهو أمير الكافرين. If Ali has now said that he is not Amir al-Mu'minin, then this must mean that he is the Amir of the Kuffar, because نقيض الإسلام الكفر. So they said that because Allah, because Ali رضي الله عنه wiped off his name. Amir al-Mu'minin. This means that he's Amir of Kafir. He's Amir al-Kafirin. He is the Amir of the Kuffar. And then they came. And then after they said, so Abdullah bin Abbas said, okay, طيب ما في مشكلة, no problem. What's the second point? Or what's the third point you bring? The other point they bring, they said, قال حكم الرجال ولا حكم لله عز وجل. That men are, يعني are ruling, and the rule of Allah subhanahu wa taala is not ruling. فأجاب عنهم. Ibn Abbas Ibn Abbas answered them. And then he said, أَلَيْسَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي صُلْحِ الْحُدَيْبِيَّةِ لَمَّا صَالِحَ سُهَيْلِ بِنْ عَمَرْ When, in the truth of, 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 of Hudaybiyyah, when the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم did, uh, he did, uh, he did Musalaha, he wrote a treaty with Suhail ibn Amr. Okay? And he said, هَذَا مَا صَالَحَ مَا صَالَحَ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ This is what Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, the Messenger of Allah, has made the contract with. He wrote it in the contract that I, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, agreed to this, this and that. And Suhail said to him, لا تكتب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Don't write the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. We don't believe you are the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. لو كنا نؤمن أنك الرسول ما قتلناك. If we believe that he was the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will never fight you in the first place. So take away Rasulullah. We don't believe you are Rasulullah. And Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam, he wiped it off. And he wrote down Muhammad ibn Abdullah. So Ibn Abbas is saying, did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do the same thing that Ali radiallahu anhu did? Okay. If you are saying, and فَمَحَا ذَلِكْ Did he not write, did he not يعني, uh, uh, take it away? Um, and then he said, if you did was Prophet Muhammad wrong because he took away Rasulullah, does that mean he's not the, he's not the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa If you say that he's not the Messenger of Allah because he wiped off his name, قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ Okay, you have made, you have made kufr. And then Ali radiallahu anhu said, هَلْ خَرَجْتُ أو أب, uh, uh, Ibn Abbas while debating them, when he said this mas'ala, they believed him. He said, هَلْ خَرَجْتُمْ عَنْ ذَلِكْ قَالُوا خَرَجْنَا They said, he said, will you leave this statement now that I've Debated you on that? Do you, do you take away that? Do you take back that statement? They said, okay, we take back that statement. And then the second one. أَمَّا قَوْلُكُمْ لَا حُكْمَ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ As for your statement that the hukum, there's no hukum except for the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنَهُمْ فَبْعَثْ حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا وَإِنْ إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنَهُمَا If you if you يعني if you're scared of يعني separation between them, Allah said فَبْعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ bring a bring a mediator from his family وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا and a mediator from her family إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحَ if they want to make صُلْحَ if they want to make peace between them, Allah سبحانه وتعالى said that bring someone from their family and bring someone from the man's family from the, and from the woman's family. This is a delil and, and Abdullah bin Abbas said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the men to rule. He told them rule. Bring a man to rule. Hakaman min ahlihi wa hakaman min ahliha. Bring a hakam from her family. Bring a hakam from his family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly telling you to rule by way of people. Is that not the case that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that? 
Are you going to leave this particular statement? قالوا خرجنا. They said we'll leave. When Ali radiallahu anhu was debating the kharaj or khawarij, كانوا ستة آلاف. They were six thousand. Ah. فخرج منهم يعني أو رجع أربعة آلاف وبقي وبقي اثنان على ما كانوا عليه. When Ali radiallahu anhu, when Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he 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 debated them. He debated the khawarij. When he debated the khawarij, they what? They were six thousand strong. Ali radiallahu anhu, Abu Bin Abbas managed to what? To take away four thousand of them. And the other two thousand, they stayed on what they were staying upon. They believed in their madness. خلاص, this this issue is over. The the Ali radiallahu anhu left them. When he was asked upon them, what do you say about the khawarij? هل هم الكفار؟ are they kufar? are they this? are they that? he said إخواننا بغوا علينا our brothers who have transgressed against us. now Ali left them as long as they're not making مشاكل problems in the Muslim society he left them. then on a journey there's a there's a companion that people talk about his name is Khabab 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 was an early Muslim. A very early Muslim, and he's one of the earliest of Muslims, and he's a blessed companion. But people don't talk about it too much because he never narrated, he never narrated a hadith, and he wasn't, he was a low-profile Sahabi, meaning that he wasn't in the, you know, you don't hear a lot from him. But he was there from the beginning. He had a son known as Ahmed, Ahmed ibn Khabbab. Ahmed ibn Khabbab and his wife were traveling in Iraq or in that area where the Khawarij were. The Khawarij. Um, Found him and his husband, and found him and his wife. And his wife was متكملة, uh, meaning that she was nine months pregnant. So they said to him, "You are Ahmed ibn Khabbad." And he said, "Yes." He said, "Can you tell us a hadith for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam?" And he said, "He the hadith. He said he said that a hadith about there was going to be fitna after I die. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about fitna that there will be fitna after I die." They, the Khawad, said, you're, it sounds like you're talking about us. He said, no, I'm talking about you. فَقَتَلُهُ They killed him. They killed his wife. And then after when they killed his wife, they opened up his wife's stomach and took the baby out and threw the baby uh, into, into like a lake. How did the Khawad, this is the Khawad, you see it, Daesh, you see it with your own eyes, Ali. They killed the Prophet ﷺ and said, يَقْتُلُونَ أَهْلُ الْإِسْلَامَ يَدْعُونَ أَهْلُ الْأَوْثَانَ and they kill Muslims and they leave Ahl Awthan and they leave the people who worship idols. MashaAllah. And we're not saying attack Kufar. We're not saying that at all. We're not saying now go and attack Kufar. I've done nothing to you. No. But the Muslims, there's Mashaqqa in their balad. Sudan, Mushaq. I remember I had a doctor. The doctor, one Sudanese doctor, he taught us, you know, Nahu and things like this. And I remember. He was talking about all the problems in the Muslim countries. And before that was, now Sudan is a muskila. But when he was talking to us, six, five, six years ago, he was like, he was like, Nigeria muskila, Niger muskila, Mali muskila, Jazair muskila, Yemen muskila. And now, Sudan muskila. His own balad, Sudan was a muskila. And every balad there's these people. بينما الكفار يعيشون يعني حياة رغيدة جدا يعني الكفار they live, mashallah, beautiful life. No problem with their balad. These khawari, they don't do anything to those kuffar. But the Muslims, they chop their head off, they do this to them, they kill them. Innocent women, just this يعني, Somali lady, she was just in, she just visited Somalia to help her country. She went to help her country, and in the hotel, they put a bomb in the hotel and they kill her. يعني. Just a month ago, this lady, she nothing, she's even a woman, an innocent lady. She just went just to her country to help her country. She loves where she comes from, she wants to help the people of her country. And what do they do? يعني they put a bomb and they kill her. And then the other people, يعني they live, يعني أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. الحق أن يسأل. We have to ask a question. These people, in this time of technology, in this time of satellites all over the earth, how are these people gaining these weapons? Who are these jamaat buying their weapons from? Who are these jama? How do these jamaat? How do these ragtag? Armies or Iraq tag militiamen. Who is supporting these people? 
I've never met one Muslim in my life who has supported these people. I have never met a true Muslim who said, who are these people, Yani? They are mature, nobody even knows who they are. And yet they cause facade for the So they killed Khabab, and they killed the Khabab and his wife and his daughter. And Ali radiallahu anhu heard about this. He heard about this. Sami'a dhalik wa jahza jaysan wa ghzah. Ali heard about this. Jahza jaysan. Jahza jaysan. He's prepared the army wa ghzah. And said, okay, not khalaf. He's getting too much. We have to fight them. Okay. And he fought them. And this ghzwa, uh, this battle is known as ghzwa to nahrawan. The ghzwa of nahrawan. In the Ghazwa of Nahrawan, Ali radiallahu anhu demolished their army, destroyed them, destroyed the Khawarij, destroyed the Khawarij totally. And yani, even some reports say that no more than seven people were killed in Ali radiallahu anhu's army. This is how they are, they're a ragtag yani, army, Aslan. So uh, they went yani, and they, they were what? They were, they were, dis they were killed. Now, what ends up happening is um, they're defeated, they're destroyed. Uh, they want revenge now, they want revenge because of what has happened. They want vengeance. They want vengeance on what has happened. So, so a few, yani, uh, three of them conspire and say, okay, you know what? This is becoming disgusting. This is becoming untenable. We need to kill three people to rid, to rid the Ummah of this problem. In their eyes, they believe that Ali radiallahu anhu is a problem. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is a problem. Uh, Amr ibn al-As is a problem. So they say we need to kill Amr ibn al-As, we need to kill Ali radiallahu anhu, and we need to kill Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Khalas. The person that was designated the Qatar to kill uh, Ali radiallahu anhu was Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Abdul Rahman ibn al Muljim. <coughs> so he goes on to take on the task. <coughs> what ends up happening is that Ali radiallahu anhu is going to pray Salatul Fajr. He's going to pray Salatul Fajr. And on his way to, uh, yani to, 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 to pray Salatul Fajr, Abdullah ibn Muljim hits him in the back, yani some say the hemp, with a uh, dagger with poison on it. And he kills him يعني, on his way to Salat al Fajr. Okay? And they don't end up killing the others. But they succeed in killing Ali. They succeed in killing Ali. Ali radiallahu anhu, his, his family, his household, his children, because of when he died, because of the fitna of the khawariz, the khawf, they thought that the, he thought that they would do nabish, nabish qabrahu. يعني. He thought that the Khawarij would dig his grave up. This is how, يعني, literally, يعني, they are literally bloodthirsty. يعني. Even when you're dead, it's, it's not enough that you're dead. خلاص, they got, it's not enough that you're dead. And we see it. يعني, once they kill you, they, put, they burn you, they do this, they do that. They, يعني, they do all kinds of things. And uh, I because of this, they built nine graves. And they all said that these graves are the graves of Ali. These graves are the graves of Ali. Because they said that if... If, يعني, uh, if they did i'lan of the mawdi' of his qabr, they would take out his body from the grave. They built nine graves and they put him in one of those graves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best where he's buried. So when people say that his grave is in Karbala or his grave is in Afghanistan or his grave is in this place, his grave is unknown. What we know is that his grave is in Iraq, but nobody knows where his grave is. And Ibn Taymiyyah says that the grave that the Shia go to uh, is not his grave. If they knew who was in the grave of the person they think is, they'll, say, they'll, they'll, they'll throw and it's Mughira, they'll, they'll throw stones at that grave. It's ibn Shu'ba. He says that grave is the grave of Mughira ibn Shu'ba, and the Shia they hate Al Mughira ibn Shu'ba. And they're the ones that they don't tawaf and things that they don't tawaf around a grave that they hate. So from here, يعني, uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, he dies. 
and that is, this is the end of Al Khulafa Al Rashidin when Prophet Allah said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al Khulafa Al Rashidin. Upon his Masunnah, the Sunnah of the Khulafa Al Rashidin. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he was bought, يعني, he was killed, and um, يعني, he, يعني, the, um, shismu, he was buried in nine different places, and from here to um, there is a nukta to tahawul, there's a point of change. The point of change is this. The Khawarij were a firqa uh, siyasiya in the beginning. The Khawarij they were like a political kind of uh, group who wanted this or that. They changed after this, after time, to a intaqalu min firqatin siyasiya la firqatin aqadiyya. They changed from a political kind of uh, uh, group to a aqidah of their own. And they ended up, you know, believing in the person is a mukhlid fi nar, sahib al maasi, person who does any haram, any kabira. He's mukhlid fi nar. He's he will be in the nar forever. And uh, whoever falls into a maybe sin is a kafir. And other aqida which is batila. And after this, they travelled to different parts of the world. Some of them they went to North Africa. Other ones they went to. The southern part of the, the Arabian Peninsula, they settled in Oman, what is Oman today, which is why Oman is, they are on a aqidah known as Al Ibadiyya. Al Ibadiyya. Al Ibadiyya are the descendants of the Khawarij. They'll tell you that themselves. They themselves will tell you Al Ibadiyya is the, they are the uh, descendants of the Khawarij. So that's uh, 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 one thing that happened. After that, also, you have the Shia who came up after this. Even though this particular issue has nothing to do with the Shia in terms of his death, the Shia, you know, were lamenting his great, were lamenting him and lamenting the death of his son Hussein, and that's other politics that happen. But there's many يعني, ramifications that happen out of this. يعني, على كل حال, some of the things يعني, things that you learn from the story number one is that the kalam, the speech of the scholars in in relation to the Khawarij. The Khawarij. The Khawarij are people, they're known as the Khawarij because they they do khuruj al imam. They uh, rebel against the Muslim leader. And Rasulullah warned his Muslims, warned the companions to not rebel. When uh, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi was, was killing companions, was killing uh, uh, many yani, uh, notable Islamic personalities. The companions of, of the Commission of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not rebel. When uh, so many things were done against the Muslims, يعني, the, the, يعني, the Muslims did not rebel because rebelling against the Muslims may bring about an issue which is even worse. And يعني, some of you are not, uh, are not aware. I remember I watched a video in this masjid. It was Abu Suhaib. It was nine years ago. Um, the Arabi, the Arab speaking, I watched it here and I'm watching on my computer, my laptop, and he said, Wallahi, what is going to happen? And this was when Egypt, this is only Muslim when Muslim started. You know, Ashab, Yurid, Iskhatun, Nidab, we want the people, want the regime to fall. Okay. He said here in this message, and I remember because the way he talks, he talks with such might, he said, You know, I guarantee you that what's going to come out of this is worse. And Wallahi, what's come out is worse. Look at what's happened now. This country, Libya, there's a slave trade now, and that's Allah salam wa afiyah. Because of them, maybe if kuffar, maybe if, or non muslim from the Caribbean or from other black countries, if they see this, they're going to say, Hadawul Islam, Islam is to ibad al nas, Islam is to make, يعني, is to enslave people. And Umar radiallahu anhu, when, Abr, when, the, when Abdullah bin Amr ibn As was oppressing an Egyptian, because an Egyptian at the time it was not an Arab country, and, the, and, and, and Abdullah bin Amr ibn As had an argument with an Egyptian, so they came to Umar and Abdullah bin Amr ibn As thought because he's an Arab that Umar would, would prefer him over the Egyptian and Umar said to him, Mata istab'at, Mata istab, istab, Mata istab'atum al-nas wa waladatum ummahatum ahrara When did you begin to take these people as slaves and their mothers bore them as, uh, you know, gave birth to them as free men? Look at the mashakil that happened in this country, yani killing and fujur and this and that يعني, so for you to think that rebellion uh, يعني, is something which is good it's not good at all and this is what the Khawarij do now look at these look at these countries Iraq, Syria you see if you're all nice what was better now or then 
millions of Muslims now, they've fled their country, they live in, they're going to live in Western countries, we don't know, are they going to become kuffar or are they going to become Muslim? Because the first generation of Muslims who always come to, this, come to a new land, a lot of them fall off and then it's the later generation who <coughs> yani, do well. So, you know, we have to be very, very careful. Another firqa that came out was, yani, the, the Rafiwa, who hate the companions. And they went to the level of saying that Ali is Allah, not all of them, that Ali is Allah, that you have an Ithna Sharia, the 12 Imams, and that the last Imam is, you know, is hiding somewhere in some sort of cave, and, you know, they believe that the Prophet and his companions, I mean the companions of Allah, except for seven, eight, or nine, they all became kuffar. There's another Mus'haf, there's another Quran that is, that is, that is, that, that is, that, that is lost, Mus'haf Fatima, the Mus'haf of Fatima, and, and that Umar killed Fatima, slammed the door in her face, and it made her die, all oh, this, any stuff. So these things have ramifications, so we need to understand that as a Muslim, we need to number one be a jama'ah, we need to be a jama'ah, we need to be in one. So for example, uh, this masjid is a masjid inshallah ta'ala, the course of the sunnah of the masjid of Allah, you should stick to this masjid, you should be part of the jama'ah, be part of your congregation, teach people al-Islam, don't believe the i'lan that you see, a qa'ida that you should live by all your life, because many of us, when these jama'at were, uh, some of you are young, but when these jama'at were coming out in the 90s and the 2000s, Al-Qaeda and this one and, and, and this one and uh, Bin Laden and Ayman al zawahiri and all this stuff, people were confused because there wasn't people talking against them. So people that we knew thought that they were upon haqq. So uh, if there ever is a jama'at, a group of people that come out, and they say that we want to bring Nasr of Islam, we want to do this. Tatawakaf, don't join them. Rasulullah said to Awwad, and I've said this especially many times, Awwad billahi min fitan ma dhahra minha wa ma baqan. Seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the fitan ma dhahra minha wa ma baqan. The mas'ala are the, the khawarij kuffar. Some ulama say they're not kuffar, some ulama they say they're kuffar. The reason why some ulama say that they are kuffar is because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Ali is in Jannah. Okay, Ali is in Jannah. And all the other, uh, yani, Al-Sa'ad, Al-Waqqas, Al-Rahman, Ibn Awf, all these other people, he said that they are in Jannah. So, the fact that the, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ali is in Jannah, if these kuffar believe that Ali is a kafir, then they're doing takdeeb of what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. They deny what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Which is why some ulama say, no, they're kuffar. And the reason they're kuffar is because they deny the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ali is in Jannah. Yani, Ali is from the people of Jannah. Now, for you to say that he's not from the people of Jannah means either you're lying or the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is lying. If you say the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is lying, then you're going to say that he didn't give the risala, he didn't give, yani, he didn't spread Islam properly. And this is, this is a kuffar. So, on this basis, some ulama say that they are kuffar, and some ulama say they are not kuffar. Well, well, masala mawdur al khilaf. Yani the masala is a masala of khilaf between al ulama. So this is just some of the, yani, the issues dealing with this. Now, yani, what's, how does how do Muslims now benefit from this qissa? How do Muslims benefit from this qissa? Muslims benefit from this qissa. من عدة أوجه from many many angles number one الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا فأصحوا بينهما فإن بغت إحداهما على الأخرى فقاتلوا التي تبغي حتى تفيها إلى أمر الله وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا بينهما فأصحوا بينهما if two طائف two or طائفتان two groups of Muslims fight مؤمنون الله سبحانه وتعالى سماء مؤمنون الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول لهم مؤمنون they believe in Allah اقتتلوا they fight فأصلحوا بينهما make صلح between them meaning that يعني even if you have neighbors they don't get along family members they don't get along people that you know don't get along don't be a person that you're making the fit and worse make things better make things better يعني فأصلحوا بينهما فإن بغت إحداهما على الأخرى after trying to make إصلاح after you try to make إصلاح بغت إحداهما على الأخرى if they continue to transgress if one party continues to transgress against the other, فَقَاتِلْ الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيهَ إِلَىٰ عَمْلِ اللَّهِ Then fight those who transgress until they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we look at the qisa of, 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 of Abdullah bin Abbas and Ali with the Khawarij. They left them to do their thing. Okay, خلاص, say what we want to say. 
But then, when companions were walking on the streets, were traveling with their families, they started killing innocent people. So, yani, the qissa that I'll say for you people, yani, for, for all of us, should I say, afwan, is that if there are warring factions between Muslims and Yaqub we need to be peacemakers. Not people who are making trouble. One brother doesn't get along with another brother, we want to bring, we want to, you know, we want to see his downfall. One Muslim is successful, and we can't, we can't bear to see it, so we want to bring, 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 bring him down. Family members are fighting, and you know, if you can't say, if you can't make the issue better, khalas, stay away from the fitna that the Prophet of Allah said, تَعَوَّذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الْفِتَنَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ Seek from Allah from the fitna. Some people, rather than making it better, they make it worse. This is not the way. You, so I would say, Ya Khil Kareem, we should remember that we as Muslims, we need to be together. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى The believers are brothers, we need to act as if we are brothers. It doesn't matter, you know, yes, we come from different countries, we come from different ethnicities, but we live in this country. Uh, as far as we know, we're going to continue living in this country. Allah Azza wa Jalla knows the future. We need to يعني, be one. We need to strive to be a Muslim Ummah upon haq, not upon batil, upon truth. We're not going to join with somebody who they believe that the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are not deen. No, we're not going to join with someone like that. We're going to join with people with truth. Be good to your Muslim brother. Don't raise your hand to the Muslim brother. For some, the Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith, كُلُّ مُسْلِمٍ عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ مُسْلِمٍ حَرَامٍ Every Muslim is a Muslim is haram. You know, and look what the Khawarij, they knew about this. وَمَا ذَلِكْ بَغْوَ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ even though they knew that, they knew the message of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and said, "Kullu Muslimin ala Muslimin haram." Every Muslim against another Muslim is haram. Even though they carried on, so Ikhwan, we need to be people of uh, Islah, people that we rectify, rectify our situation, rectify ourselves, rectify our families, bring war and factions together. Not any يعني, troublemakers, people. يعني, don't don't say. Filthy, don't give yourself bad alqab, bad nicknames to one another. We have to be uh, people who are upon al istiqamah, upon khayr. Insha'Allah Ta'ala will open the floor for questions, insha'Allah Ta'ala, for those who have questions regarding the small board or any other general questions. Normally, what ends up happening is that nobody will ask questions, and then after one guy will ask questions, and then after the questions start, and after, after the salah, people start asking questions. <coughs> when it's the time, just one, mashallah, take, look. Uh, look, there's a fatty that I want to ask. Look, with a question, <coughs> let me give you. Let me tell you why asking a question is good in front of everyone. Number one, you benefit because you learn, and you taught other people. If your niya, let's say for example, something is confusing you, and you sincerely ask a sheikh or someone who you know has knowledge, you and you want everyone to benefit as well. You'll be rewarded, which is why in the hadith of. Uh, Jibreel, Jibreel came to the companions بَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ جُلُوسٌ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم that يوم when we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah one day إِذْ طَلَعَ عَلَيْنَا رَجُلٌ a man we saw it here a man شَدِيدُ بَيَادُ الثَّوَابِ no, شَدِيدُ بَيَادُ الثِّيَابِ شَدِيدُ سَوَادِ شَعْرِ he was very white thobe and very black hair يعني لا يُرَى عَلَيْهِ أَثْرُ السَّفِرِ we never saw on him any أثر any sign of travel because in those days if even in Saudi now if you wear a thobe, a white thobe, and you wear it for one day, before it starts to change colour, you just smell, okay? It smells a bit sweaty, and you can feel the dust almost start to form. If you wear a white thobe three, four, five days, you will start to see that it becomes brown like the sand. That's why things eat, so that's why they said, لا يرى عليه أثر السفر We don't see any sign of travel on this man, as if he just dropped into space, came down, and just started walking to us. Allah kulli hadhi asked Rishab Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many questions. At the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the hadith, what did Muhammad say to Umar? Ya Umar, atadri man is sa'il? Do you know who the question was? Bultu Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. I said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his Christian Ogas. Qala fa'innahu Jibreel, he is Jibreel. Atakum yu'allimukum deenukum. He came to teach you your religion. In front of everybody, the mu'ulama say um, a, a fa'idah, a, a, a fa'idah from this, a benefit that we're saying from this is that he taught people in front of everyone so everyone can benefit. So if you ask a question for everyone to benefit, this is good. Yes, I just wanted to know um, 
the reasoning, I know we shouldn't really dwell into too much about the conflict between Muawiyah and, and Ali Raghulan, but I just want to know why Muawiyah Raghulan didn't give bayah to to Ali. I think like the other people, he wanted, that's why I don't know, he wanted justice to be done immediately for Uthman. That's why. He wanted justice to immediately be given for Uthman, because like I said in the earlier, Uthman, after he died, Ali was going to give him justice. He wanted, he wanted everybody else for the killers to be caught, mm. but they wanted it to be done there and then. Now Ali, he's the one who's taken power. He's the one who knows he's in the country now. He's saying, look, well, let's just wait for a minute. It's not that we're not going to do it now. Let's just wait. But they wanted to do it right now when it's hot. And he was not of that opinion. And there could have been other factors and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. What I will say is that there's a very good lecture by Dr. Uthman al Khamis. I don't know if you guys know about Uthman al Khamis. Right, Uthman al Khamis. For those who understand Arabic, he's very good. And he has a lecture, he speaks perfect English. He's got a lecture about the Shia and how they started and this issue. And it's on Green Name Muslim's web, uh, YouTube page. Uthman al Khamis. K H A M E E S. Uthman al Khamis. He's an expert in this. So it's, he, he, if you want any more deta details, that's the best place to go to. And one more. Devil's Deception in English uh, is written in English, an old book by Dr. Bilal Phillips. Yani in that particular regard, it's an excellent book, written 30 years ago. Uh, Aisha uh, and Muawiyah mm -hmm. were together um, the dispute. Mm -hmm. which Prophet prophesied. Prophesied, prophesied. So, again, can you just give a bit of history? Um, well, Wahi, to be honest with you, I have to just be honest with you, my knowledge on that part is quite. Is 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 base level to be honest with you, but yeah, Aisha radiallahu anha was on that side that wanted justice straight away, um, and obviously uh, 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 Ali refused to obviously fight them. He refused to take them as 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 as, as, as you know. He, so, but to be honest with you, right now in my in my in my kind of that killer right now, I can't even bring out all the information. To be honest with you, fuck them. Sheikh, you mentioned about uh, Hajjad ibn Yusuf. Mm. Um, he, he's the one that fought Abdullah ibn uh, Awad. He Abdullah killed Abdullah. az Zubair, yeah, Abdullah ibn Zubair, yeah. He killed him and crucified him and made his body in the streets of everyone to see. So. What happened there between Hajjad it was just, it was just, It was just basically, he was just basically, it wasn't like something specific in a sense what, like what we had with the death of Ali. It was Hajjad was a tyrant. And they basically just, he just talking about, he was talking about the tyranny of Hajjaj. And Hajjaj, even Hajjaj's story, Hajjaj was an expert in Arabic language. He knew Arabic language very well. And Hajjaj didn't like Bani, I think, is it, is it Bani, Ab, Bani Umayyah? It's either he worked for Abu, 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 Bani Umayyah and he didn't, or he didn't like Bani Umayyah. No, he's Iraq, yeah. He's Bani Abdul Fala Abbas, yeah. He didn't like Bani Umayyah. Bani Umayyah is, is Muawiyah's uh, people. He was teaching Quran. He had nothing to do with politics, even his Qisr <coughs> and And he had nothing to do with politics. He was just a Quran teacher. And then some soldiers and some troops from Bani Umayyah, they barged him and they roughed him up a little bit. They manhandled him and he said, oh, I'm getting revenge. You're not going to manhandle me like this. And he became, he said, I'm going to get to the top and I'm going to make Bani Umayyah see who Hajjaj is. He's a miskeen Quran teacher, miskeen guy. And they did that to him and he caused facade in the earth. Now look into history. People who have fallen like that before, people that they, that they were people that they had nothing going for them. Someone did something bad to them and they almost destroyed the entire world. And you can, and it's history, I don't even need to say the person's name. Uh, yani, you know, a smart person just understands by science. So, yani, the, what I'll say is that that's even another qissa. Uh, obviously, he was a tyrant and he did very bad things. Some of them said he was a kufar, uh, and some of them didn't say kufar. Also, there was a man he never killed. There was a man he never killed. He would, if he said anything to Hajjaj, Khalas is finished. So I think it's Sa'id ibn Musayyib. Sa'id ibn Musayyib used to pray in the same masjid 
uh, you know, for 50, 40 years, you can survive before that. And they asked Hajjaj, look at this, look at the ihtiram, look at this, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's, uh, it's ajib, yeah, it's, it's, from one angle, it's ajib. They asked Hajjaj, why is it that your sword never, you never hit uh, Sa'id al Musayyib? Whoever, for those who don't know Sa'id al Musayyib, Sa'id al Musayyib was the alim who was made fuqaha al Sab'a. The four jurists, the four fuqaha, the four ulama of that time. Al fuqaha al Sab'a. The four fuqaha, the seven, the seven fuqaha. And with, with him, um, he was min afqah al Tabi'in. He was from the most knowledgeable of the Tabi'in. And he was kana aliman bi qadaya umar. He was an alim with the judgments. He knew who were a'lam al nas bi qadaya umar. He was an alim who knew all of Umar's fatwas from back in the day. To the point where Umar's son, Abdullah bin Umar, used to go to Abdullah bin Abbas. Umar's son is who? Abdullah bin Umar, he's a Sahabi. He would go to a Tabi'i and would tell me, tell me about what my father Umar anhu said. This is the virtue of Sayyid al Musayyid. He said, why didn't you kill Sayyid al Musayyib? He said, Hajjad said, because before, when I was a young person, before I got into politics, when I was just a Muslim Quran teacher, yani, I was making mistakes in my salawat. And Sayyid al Musayyib came to my father. And no, my father was making mistakes in his salah. Sorry. My father was making mistakes in my salah. And Sayyid al Musayyib in front of me corrected my father. He corrected my father in the mistake that he was making his prayer. So from that day, I respected him because he corrected my father. He left him. Look at the manaqib, the, the, the manzila of the alim. This is why he left Sayyid al-Musayyib. He would never do anything to Sayyid al-Musayyib. Because Sayyid al-Musayyib, yani yani he, 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 he corrected he, uh, the father of Hajjaj. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically the Qisa. He's basically a tyrant himself, killed um, some companions, a lot of Tabi'een, uh, because of his political affiliations. But uh, having said that, some really might say that even a lot of Khayr, what he did, he did things for the Arabic language, he did things for the Quran. They say that he's one of the people who helped put the Tashkil, Fatah al Dhamma Kasra, on the Quran. Um, so there's other things that he did, so there's bad and there's good. And this is sometimes what happens with Muslims. Yani a Muslim can sometimes have bad, you can have good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all those Muslims who have fallen into bad and um, things. Yes, sir. Ustad, um, just briefly, could you just advise us why it's important to know about the subject that you spoke about today? Because some people may say that the Salafis or Ahl al-Hadith keep bringing about these controversial issues that we need to be united now, and you're talking about stuff that could possibly not be seen as uniting people. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the mole, look, okay, 100% this is a mas'ala har or mas'ala sakhina. It's a hot issue. It's a very hot issue. It's not something that I feel as if, it's not something that I'll, I'll, not something that I'll feel comfortable talking about day in, day out. That's just me as a Muslim. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا uh, Hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala جَمِيعًا All of you, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And don't be, uh, and don't uh, differ. When we talk about these masa'il, when we talk about these masa'il, we talk about these masa'il, number one, because they happen, and number two, for bayan al-haqiqa. So we, we want to know what is Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah's mawqif, what is their stand, start source the issue. We never said Ali, we never said Umar, we never, sorry, we never said Aisha, she's wrong. We never said Muawiyah is a fasiq, wa'udhu billah. We never said Ali is this. No, no, no. We're talking about the mas'ala and what is Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah's mawqif to the mas'ala. What is our view to the mas'ala? And the view of our mas'ala is that it was something, yani, amrun waqa'a an ijtihad, something that happened because of ijtihad, and that some, some were right, some were wrong, but no doubt, Ibn Uthaymin said in the Sharh of Aqeel wa Sutiyah, Al Haqqu, the Haqq was, because obviously Ali was with, with inshallah, was with Ali. But we're not going to say now, Mu'awi was wrong, Aisha was wrong, this is wrong. No, we never say that. We learn these issues for to know our mawqif. So when we meet people like a Shia, or we meet the Khawarij, and they say, oh, what's your view on this? We say our view is the view of the companion, the, views of, the view of Abu Hanifa, the view of Malik, the view of Shafi, the view of Awza'i, the view of Sayyid al Musayyid. This is our view. 
And the view is that it was a fitna that happened. We asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them from the fitna. And, and, and basically, I mean, you know, that, and, and we learn obviously, so we can obviously not want to draw benefit from it. And that we have the correct position of it. Because if you don't have the correct position on this issue, before you know it, you'll be in Tehran, worshipping the grave of, of, of some sort of any saint or any something like that. So, nah. Okay. So, you touched briefly, and we had a private conversation around mm. There was a certain time in London mm. where nah. this dawah, the Khadi well, dawah, was very nah. prominent. Nah. And obviously Luton mm. uh, had, it was hugely, mm. it was huge here as well. And mm. We felt the brunt of it and mm. we're still sort mm. of um, the remnants of the Takari. Nah. I mean, knowing these things that you've mentioned throughout the lecture, mm. um, what are the pitfalls for young people? That they should try to avoid so they don't the, fall into these errors. The pitfall, I remember, for example, me, I was on a scheme, we started practicing Al Islam, you know, the 2000s, whatever. And I remember, number one, we didn't have knowledge of the religion. That's the first thing. Number one, we had no knowledge of the religion. So we start practicing Al Islam and we have no knowledge of the religion. This is before the YouTube da'wah. This is before we start practicing, you know, go to curries and buy a camera and start talking. This is before that. This is when the da'wah was grassroots da'wah. Um, we had people like, they don't do it anymore, we had Jamaat Tabligh knocking on our doors telling us to go on 40 days, you know, 3 days, we go out 30 days, we go Jewsbury, and then from there you meet other maybe Salafi brothers. It was, this is how it was grassroots that way, it wasn't the computer, you know, I started practicing yesterday, let me go curries, buy, you know, uh, you know, a camera, thousand pounds, and I'm talking with Dawa, when I'm inside, I don't know anything. This was very grassroots, it was very natural uh, way. So, what ended up happening is that people don't have knowledge of Islam, that's the one thing. So, what did they end up doing? They end up, um, they end up uh, slandering those people who have knowledge. So I remember there used to be a video. I remember in that. I was we were miskeen, Allah. There was a video. It's, it's gone down now, but this is we're talking about like 2007, 2008. It was scholars, and this one YouTube was early. It was called Scholars and Their Evil Master. I remember it. Scholars and Their Evil Master. And they picked out, they picked, um, they got, what do you call it? They got, um, they got clips and they edited the clips and they made these scholars look evil. And I remember they had the video of even Sheikh Fawzan. Sheikh Fawzan is an old man. Miskeen Sheikh. I, I met Sheikh Fawzan with my own, I, I didn't see any pomp from, from Sheikh Fawzan. He prayed in the masjid, he was old, he sat on the chair and he went back to Dar al Iftah. I didn't, I didn't see anything, the way in which they pretend as if these ulama, they live in palaces and they drive, you know, these massive cars and, and of course some people, some of them have money, so, you know, that's just, that's just you know, Abu Hanif had money, Imam Malik had money, but yani, they pretend as if these scholars are evil people. So when we saw this, we said, SubhanAllah, man, you know, um, I, you know I, I don't want to take from these people. So that's what they do. They they make they make um, they make young people hate scholars. There's no scholars. So then, when they say to you that all the scholars of Islam are evil, then you have no choice but to follow them. And they'll tell you, yeah, you put this around your neck, put this around your body, and go and do this and go and do that. So my and 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 they 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 play on young minds of Muslims. They know they are very vulnerable, and that because you're 16, 17. 15, 16, 17, you have a change the world mentality, I want to change the world, and you have no wisdom. You have the, you have the strength of a man, you have, and you have the azima, the will of a young person, but you don't have any hikmah, you don't have any memories or any experiences in your life to draw on, uh, uh, you know, so what ends up happening is, you know, they, they turn these people out overnight, you know, they can make these people do, um, you know, very, very bad things, and subhanAllah, in London it was Montesha. It was everywhere, and there was not a place you could go except for that this da'wah was Montesha. Uh, was spread everywhere. And there are a lot of people, a lot of good Muslim brothers that I know, a lot of good, good men, you know, wallahi, they were good brothers, you know, now I, I, I don't know if so many people are alive, are they dead, and they were very sincere Muslim brothers, and because of this evil da'wah, wallahi, I can't even count how many. I remember there was even one of them, he was, yani, he, I, mean, I said to him, you know, we used to go to one dust together, and I said to him, you know, why don't you go and apply for Al Medina? You know, you're, mashallah, you're sharp, you're. And he said to me, you know, um, um, yeah, I mean, no, no, I, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to do that. I said, why, brother? I said, why? 
He said, oh, because oh, Sheikh Fawzan and those people, they, 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 teach, they, they teach that. You know, and I said, I don't believe in that. I never saw his brother for months. Before I knew it, he did the Libra Kriya attack in the village. So, subhanAllah al you know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to save these young youth. If there's ever, if you ever meet someone who's telling you to put a bomb on your chest or to uh, go out and fight, number one, don't, number one, don't listen to them and ask Ahlul Ilm. Ask people of knowledge. And if you, don't, if, if you believe Ahlul Ilm are all corrupt, then I say to you, Tawakkafu yani, wait, give yourself five years. If you believe what your opponent haq, give yourself five years, I guarantee you in the five years, if you learn Islam sincerely for the sake of Allah, your view will change. Because you'll realize they're just trying to hypnotize you. They're just trying to hypnotize you, Tafakkur Shaykh. These Khawari, are they uh, purposely manipulative or they themselves are misguided? And they control? themselves are misguided. They themselves are misguided. They themselves are misguided. One of the alamat of the, of, of, of the Khawari is يَأْخُذُونَ مِنْ ظَاهِرِ الْإِسْلَامِ دُونَ الْفِقْ they take our, they take from us Allah. They're literally literalists in everything. And they don't interpret Islam with fiqh of understanding of the application of what the scholars use. So some of them are, are sincere, some of them are insincere in terms of maybe they have political gain or they have something to gain. But generally speaking, the majority of them are very sincere people, which is why the Prophet said that you will envy your fast to their fast. You will envy your prayer to their prayer. You know, and they would have large, dusty, you know, they'll have like dust on their heads and sajda marks because of how much ibadah that they do. And they don't lie. One of the characters of the, of the khawarij is that they don't lie. Which is why the scholars of the past, they would take a hadith from the khawarij. They would take a hadith that Imam Bukhari and guys, if they knew this man from the khawarij, they'll take his hadith because he doesn't lie. But, yani, they're, 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 you know, they're, but, but at the same time, their warped understanding of Al Islam. Is, is their warped understanding of Islam causes them to destroy everything in their wake. Which is why one, some of them said, uh, there's one of them, there's, there's a Zaim of the Khawar Qatari ibn, ibn Fuja, I think his name is. Fuja. And he said, he's, 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 he's a poet. And he said, يعني, when he was talking to himself about يعني, going to fight, and he was, he was a Khawar, you know. And he says, فَصَبَرًا فِي مَجَالِ الْمَوْتِ صَبَرًا فَمَا نَيْلُ الْخُلُودِ بِمُسْتَطَاعِ فَصَبَرًا فِي مَجَالِ الْمَوْتِ صَبَرًا Have patience in the way of death. فَمَا نَيْلُ, فما نيل الْخُلُودِ بِمُسْتَطَاعِ Because nobody, whoever the Hamshi tribe, will ever live forever. So even then you can see that he's talking to himself, trying to be sincere, trying to fight for his cause. وَمَعَ ذَلِكْ With that, they, they still, they're, they're poor misguided. Look up what they've given birth to al ibadiyya in um, in Amman or what I told you before yani just the last another, another point I wanted to make was they were in North Africa yani they're in uh, like the mountains of like, Algeria and things like that and like I said before there's a jama'ah known as al murabitun the murabitun they were mashallah they they are the ones if it was for them West African people would not be Muslim they took over what is known as the Ghana Empire. Ghana is not the country Ghana now. We're talking about Mali, Mauritania. That used to be known as Ghana. The king used to, there, used to be called Ghana, something like that. Anyway, there was da'wah there um, of Ibadiyya, of the Khawarij. And they were there, they were there of the students, of the students of the Khawarij. And they are the students of the students of another alim from Spain known as Ibn Abd al Ibn Abd al al-Andalusi, uh, who was a big alim. He wrote an explanation on Sharh of um, Mata of Imam Malik. He was a Big alim, alim al-hadith, faqih, mutabarri, mutabahir. And the Murabitun, when they became Muslim, they were strong Sunni Muslims. They had a kingdom. They defended Islam from the Spanish when they tried to take over and they kept away the Spanish. And they stopped the spread of Ibadiyya in uh, North Africa and it would have spread to West Africa if it wasn't for the Murabitun. Al Murabitun, the jama'ah of. of of Berber and from the Sanhaja tribe. The Sanhaja tribe are a tribe of, um, of uh, Berber who gave a lot to Arabic language. Ibn Ajroom, Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Dawood al-Sanhaji, or something like that his name is. So, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have rahman there. 
Is there any other question? Just one more, just one more before. Last question you lost, yeah? What's the difference between the Khawarij and the Rafidah? Khawarij are, Khawarij are people who they believe uh, uh, they're, they're rebels, so they, so they were a rebellious movement who rebelled against Sunni Muslims. Um, they believe that a Muslim who falls into major sin is a mukhalid for now, stays in the, in the fight forever. They killed Ali. They started off as a, as a political faction that became, they had their own aqari. Um And that's their kind of issue. So they believe, uh, they believe in, um, they, 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 they uh, what do you call it, they rebelled against Muslim Muslims, Khawarij. And Rasulullah said, Islam that they will kill the, the Muslim people of Islam and they will leave Ahl Awthan. So that's the Khawarij. The, the, but with the Khawarij, you, you won't find what the Shia, the Shia have, or the Ithna Ashari, the Rawafid. The Rawafid, they are people who, they number one believe that all the companions are Kuffar, except for 8, 9, 10. That's one. They believe that Ali, should have had the Khilafah after Abu Bakr. The Khawarij don't believe that. They don't believe in Al Khulud, Yani Finnar, uh, the person that, will, you know, Sahib al Ma'asi, the person that, that is a major sinner will, 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 will stay in the Hellfire forever. But the Khawar, but the, but, but the, um, but the, what do you call it? But, um, uh, yani, the, um, the Khawarawafid, they have Ghulu in the love for Ali. Whereas the Khawarij killed Ali. Some of them believe that Ali is Allah, and then after, just all kinds of madness happened. In fact, it was just one other point. The descendants of the, of, of the Shia, they have another subgroup known as the Qaramita. The Qaramita. The Qaramita, they're the people that introduced the Mawlid of the Prophet ﷺ. And they took the black stone and they took it away to Ashaqiyya. They took the black stone, and there's no black stone for maybe 60, 70 years. If the Fuqah, they said, kiss the black stone if you see it. And then they could have fit for If you see the black stone, kiss it. There was no black stone for maybe 60, 70 years. And they celebrated the Prophet's birthday. And then Iran, they were, the, the, Iran became Shia after being Shafi'iyya for 800 years. Some, uh, what's, it, what's it called? Um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, there was a group of them, before they became Shia, they were from Kurdistan. They were extreme Sufis. From extreme Sufia, they became Shia. From extreme Sufia, they became Shia. Only 500 years ago, five, 600 years ago, before that, Imam al-Razi, Imam al-Marwazi, Imam, uh, 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 you know, so many A'imma, Sibawai, all of these A'imma, they came from Iran, and now Iran is, if you ever hear the same Ar-Razi, Abu Hatim Ar-Razi, Muhammad Ar-Razi, any name Ar-Razi is the city of Tehran. It's, a, it's a, the way, for example, in London you have South London, East London, West London. Raz is an area of, is an area of uh, Tehran. And all of the Ulama Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, a lot of them are from Ar-Raz. And that Ar-Raz is a Rafadi place. That's Allah Salaam, 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 All